video tutorials by Andrew Buckle. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how you can import an EPS file. Now, of course, you can import many other files, formats such as PNG, but the one thing about the EPS file, it's a vector and it can be any size. So if you want something 100 by 100, 500 by 500, it's just a great file to be able to import. Now, first thing to do, I'm just going to go over to File and Place. Now, I've got a fairly large document here. And I'm just going to place this file. Now, this the selection I'm using are from Graphic Extras. There's a, it's called a rotated manga set, it's a sort of rotation and sort of manga like effects lines. So, uh, got this design here. You can find it on the site as well as many other patterns as well. And I'm going to select that one. Okay, place. Now, you can do this, of course, with any other pattern as well. Very similar sort of thing. Now, with other patterns, so if you've got a sort of design like that, you might actually want to define the area outside of them. And I'm just going to remove the background. I actually like to have no background, so so background is removed. And now you can obviously define the selection like that. That's just a seamless tile as well, perfectly okay. But what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to just define it on that black. To that black so it's still like say a seamless design so it's, it's got no sort of broken parts and that now what you can do then is just go to edit and define pattern give it a name pattern 4 is perfectly decent now once you've done that I'm just going to quickly remove that and now what I can do I can apply it using a layer new fill layer pattern now, one thing about these patterns also is that you can use them as brushes as well. You can use them as symbols. You can import them into Illustrator and then save them to the symbols palette. You can also import them and export them as PSD files and use them as displacement maps. Really, lots and lots of different things you can do with them. Now, click OK, and there you've got the pattern. Now, I've created a few earlier ones as well, so you can just see similar. So, so you've got that you can of course scale it and I'm just going to quickly scale it now you can combine these patterns as well you also recolor the patterns using maybe adjustment layers now remove that another option you can do is just quickly create a shape so I'm just going to quickly create a shape layer shape up there and fill obviously a white now layer layer style and what you can do then is go to pattern overlay and just going to select there's the actual pattern so you can move it around scale it and you can use it in other areas such as stroke right do it there just go to stroke just to quickly show you pattern okay cancel now another thing you can do which is why I actually created it with a bit of transparency is edit and fill and then go to pattern and script obviously select the correct pattern there so go that one click OK and come up with a dialogue and there's not obviously op other options etc but I've just gone for the brick fill that's perfectly reasonable and you can scale it and modify it, spacing apply it and really depending on the size of the file the preview doesn't always match the end result but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And you can just obviously create hundreds and hundreds of variations of that pattern. And you've got this pattern. Now, the reason about the uh, transparency, it makes it easier just so you don't end up with sort of a square, unusual dabs of on that. I'm not going to apply it, but uh, okay, so it takes a few minutes to <laughs> process, depending on the size of the document. Anyway, I hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.